Well, folks, what I'm getting ready to do is plan our trip for tomorrow. Um, there's a couple of things that I go over when I'm looking at setting up a trip, an offshore trip for the, for the next day or for a couple days. First thing is I always look at the weather, make sure that the weather is good, everything is good there. So I check a couple of different spots. I check um, wind finder, then I check windy, and then I check the offshore buoys on NOAA. <clears throat> that's going to give me, especially the NOAA offshore buoys, I check those the morning of and I, and I watch them as the day progresses. But typically they're not spot on, but they're pretty close. You can't really say 100% that this is what it's going to be because it, it does change and <clears throat> they can only predict so much. But those three places allow me to watch the waves and the wind. Now, when it comes to thunderstorms or if there's, ex if there's rain expected, what I do is I go to iweather.net and I look at their future forecast. And that allows me to see exactly what the rainfall is going to be, where the storms are going to pop up. And I've got to say that that thing has been pretty accurate. I've been pretty happy with it. Yes, I need to get radar on my boat. I just haven't done it yet. But that is one of the tools that I use along with like weather.com, Bay News 9, places like that. I kind of gather as much information as I can and pull it together and then see what happens. So it kind of gives you a good idea of, okay, this is what I'm looking at. With everything pulled together, let's take a shot at what it's going to be doing that day. So those are some of the things that I look for when I'm preparing for an offshore trip. Next, I'll go into tides in the salooners. So I go to our website at TampaBayFishingChannel.com and I go in and I check the tides and salooners for that, for that day. And I see, okay, we're going to have a moving tide during this time. Here's the major or minor feeding time. So I can kind of put those together because fishing offshore <clears throat> and fishing inshore for snook, redfish, trout, and things like that, you want a moving tide. Inside the bay, if you're fishing for grouper and snapper, you don't want a moving tide. You want one that's slow or nothing because it brings those fish off the bottom. So there's kind of a juggling act. So if you want to go and fish for grouper and snapper, you catch the tide that where it's going to slack off. And then you can go back to inshore fishing for snook, redfish, and trout. That's the cool thing about fishing inshore like that is that you can really mix it up quite a bit. So <clears throat> me preparing... Uh, for this trip, understanding the weather, understanding the tides, understanding the salooners are is very important. So this is how I start out before I ever get ready for the trip. One of the next things that I do when I'm preparing for a trip is that I go on to my Navionics map on my phone. <clears throat> Excuse my voice, I'm getting over cold. And then I start searching for new areas that I might want to go fish because I hate to go and fish the same spot twice if I can help it. Now, if there's a spot that's on fire, then I'll take the time to go out there again. But most of the time, I like to go out to a new area, look for new, new, new stuff so I, I can broaden my horizons per se. So what I'll do is I'll get on my Navionics app. And then if I'm at the office, what I'll do is I'll get on Noah's Bathymetric um, site and this is kind of based off of what they're using for all of these programs like CMAP, Seymour, Navionics, Garmin's Blue Vision, <clears throat> stuff like that. NOAA is actually going out and that's why you see these stripes here and you'll see the stripes on the same programs is that they're going off of NOAA's bathymetric and uh, sonar or, or uh, satellite views and so that's why we're seeing what we're seeing when we have missing lines and stuff because they have not gone and mapped the entire area. If you don't utilize these key tools when it comes to fishing off offshore, especially offshore, you're missing out on the boat. The Navionics relief shading on the chip on my, on my machines is huge for me to be able to go out and literally I try never to get up on plane once I get out there. I always fish a particular area and then by the time I'm ready to go home that's when I get up on plane again. Um, unless the area is just not producing then I'll get up on plane. But these are key factors to use especially planning for a trip to go out 
and find new areas instead of having to just, a lot of times though, I'll go and I'll just start scrolling through the machine when we're running and say, we're going there and that's where we go. But there's a lot of times that I'll sit on the couch or sit at my desk here at the office and I'll go through the, 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 the app on Navionics and the uh, bathymetric on NOAA and they've got the relief shading on there too. And as you'll see, it's a little, it's well, not a little, it's a lot more precise in the sense of you can see this shipwreck and it shows it right there. It, it's, it's pretty cool. But anyway, utilizing those tools before I ever go on a trip is huge because it cuts down on my learning curve tremendously. I can't imagine having to go out in the old days and just idle around looking for new spots. Um, there is a lot out there, but a lot of people say that the golf is like a big sand pit. Some areas, yes, but there's a lot more areas that have structure and things like that than other areas. So utilize these tools, take them, use them, and learn them. And I, I promise you, you'll find more fish, you'll become a better fisherman, and you'll bring home fish to eat. So with all of that being said and going through, let's get into the preparation the morning of to get ready for the trip. Well, folks, uh, this is the morning of the trip, and as I explained yesterday, <laughs> that uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of preparation that goes into getting ready to go offshore, inshore. We've got the luxury of having the boat on the lift. Um, I used to trailer every day when I was a guide from Lakeland back and forth. So my, my trips, my four hour trips would be like 10 hour trips when by the time I was done and cleaned and everything else, my six hour trips were about 12 to 14. Uh, so it, it, it takes a lot out of you getting prepped and ready for a trip like this. So right now we're getting everything on the boat, getting ready. I've been here for about an hour before uh, putting fuel in the, in the boat and, and stuff like that. So uh, we're just finishing up getting ready and gonna head off and see what we can do hopefully it's not too too bad out there uh i don't think it should be but we will we shall see well folks um i didn't show it but we we, we were getting ready to leave the dock and i had no power steering whatsoever so the boat will not steer so getting it off the lift and then getting it tied to the to the dock uh i was able to find the issue trace it through there were some loose connections that go into the actual power steering unit itself tighten those up everything is good that's one important thing is that if if you're a boater you kind of want to be in tune with your boat don't leave your tools out <laughs> that's one of the important things. yeah as everybody stood around and watched me yeah okay <laughs> um but you, you want to be in tune with your boat. You want to understand your boat. You want to understand what you're you're looking for. It was telling me it was a low voltage issue on our screen. I had charged the batteries. I'm like, I know it's not a bad battery. It can't be a bad battery um, because it was intermittent. Sure enough, found the issue. Boom, everything's good to go. So now we're going to go to the Skyway, catch some bait, and then uh, we're going to go offshore from there. So hopefully these guys aren't tired of sitting around waiting. I know Chad is. About damn time we're doing something. Just saying. All right, folks, we just arrived at the Skyway and I wanna show you what I'm looking at when I'm, I'm, when I'm marking bait. And it's key that there's gonna be thread fins and white bait mixed in with them, um, but they're already coming up, Chad says, so that's a good sign. But this is, this is what we're looking at. This is what you wanna see when you're marking bait at the Skyway. Shut up, Tony. All he does is talk, 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 talk. Well, it was a little bit more of a pain in the butt to catch bait today. The bait's wanting to stay down deep, so we had to chum quite a bit to get it up. Again, that's why we carry typically 
a hundred pounds of chum on the boat typically we went through 65 of it today well, yeah we went through a lot today but we got bait so we're gonna head off now it took us a little longer than i like but when bait's tough fishing's good all right folks what we're gonna do is i'm just gonna pick a random spot maybe i don't know haven't decided yet i'm gonna go out in this area though go big out here yeah yeah and uh pick an area and go so i'm gonna zoom in see some marks all right so we haven't fished we're gonna start off in the 70 so we haven't fished there so i'm gonna go there so we're 26 miles ouch yeah. from here so Good let's see let's there. see what we can do so what we're doing is we're coming up to this spot here and you can see that there's a ledge right here so hopefully i've never fished here before so fingers crossed that there's something here right chad hopefully something's holding otherwise we'll just blame it on Tony. okay so we're coming up to this spot and it definitely was a ledge and there was definitely fish on it so now it's you can see it there. so there's snapper up in the water column here you can see him And we'll see what we can do. We've got fish here, so Rob, you can't catch fish without having a rod in your hand. All right, I'm in. I don't want to get in the screenshot there. What's mine? Yeah, it kind of looks the same, though. Exactly. All right, he's so through. Come on, man, you're going to break the fly down. You want me to loosen the drag on that thing? Oh, man. <laughs> Fishing with a bunch of rookies here. Hey, I own a bait and tackle shop, dang it. <laughs> Sucks as a fisherman. Had that. Didn't say I could fish, I could just sell the crap this fish. Uh, that was a nice fish. How about well, what did you have that on? It was on freaking so 80 pound shrimp. leader. No, no. And then oh, it green was back. on green, green back. Folks, we have been struggling this morning trying to find fish. We've been on shows of fish and then we just couldn't get them going. And then we these two rookies over here. They hook up two fish and they break them both off and best bites we've had all morning and now it's going to shut the bite off. Way to go. Now she's hallucinating, folks. <laughs> Think she got a bite? Stop it. There she goes. Squawfish. I have a Squawfish. feeling that it's going to be like a 10 inch red group. Oh, double up. Uh, it's not big. It's not big. I think I know what Rob's nickname out. is. Uh, it's quiet. Big old grunt. Wow, big grunt. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Brian. Okay. <laughs> since since you own the tackle shop. Yeah, okay, folks, say. this is how you retie a hook after we keep losing fish. That's a tackle shop owner. That's exactly what you want. To do. And you know what? He doesn't even use. He, he. We want you to lose as many hooks as possible. You know, the, the guy has his. He he gets our jigs from us. And do you see what he's using? Not jigs. Not jigs from us. Not even here. Right I mean, now. because I want to sell them to the public instead of get to the public. I know, I know how well they to work. To the public. I already know how well they work. I want everybody else to learn. <laughs> As Tony said, you have to have thick skin to be on this boat. <laughs> there we there go. There we go. That's what I like seeing. 
that tone? Yeah, I'm trying to make sure I'm getting it on. You do, I'm gonna cut you. <laughs> there she is. Yeah, nice one. Yeah, buddy. That's Woo! what we call a hoggy. <laughs> That's a good good way to get an assist. <laughs> Stuck him to the guy in the. Where were you at? At the bank? No, I was at uh, I was at the UPS store in Winterhaven. The guy at the UPS store in Winterhaven. This proves we are in the Gulf of Mexico that you can catch hogfish on hook and line in the Gulf of Mexico. Of course, he says we're in the Keys. We're just saying. Yeah. Okay. We're based in Tampa, Florida, Ruskin. Yeah, we're running Tampa Bay Fishing Channel. Five hours. Yep. Five hours. <laughs> Ten hours. I don't know what it takes to get to the Coming back. Same Good job, Chadley. Stuck him. This better not be no grunt. Or the camera will not go back on you at all. It's not a grunt. Oh, it's a hog head. Hook in the top of the head. Look at that. Well, folks, what we're trying, we're actually been trying to do this all morning long is trying to establish a pattern on something. I mean, it's, we're, we're using stinky pinkies. We're using live shrimp. We're using white bait, cut bait, pinfish. And we just can't, can't get established what they really want. But I think part of it has to do with this, this high pressure that's over us. We have clear blue skies. So when you get a high pressure that builds up, you know what that means. It starts to make those fish a little off. It squeezes, puts a lot of pressure on their on their stomachs and makes them feel like they're, they're full, they're bloated, and they don't want to eat very well. So I think that's what we're fighting right now. When I get back, I'll have to take a look at the barometric pressure for today and see if there's, you know, what the changes were. But it's been a struggle to God bless America. And then you flub it up like that anyway so it's been a tough tough uh go of it bait was tough everything's been tough today got anything to say chad it's gonna turn around it's gonna turn around shut up tony turn it around. keep it down up there rob I'll, I'll keep, keep it down, down. keep no it down <laughs> You wouldn't know he's got a fish on it. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's only, I only get, get loud when it's big. The good thing is the brake makes noise. <laughs> oh, he's got a hog. Yeah? Yeah. It could be a keeper too. A little small. Yeah, it looks close. Did you hear what he just said? It's a little small. It's thick though. Is this guy from New York. Well, I mean, come on. We're going to start calling him New York. Right? <laughs> <Whoa>. Yeah. <laughs> Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Sometimes, folks, you just gotta be patient. <laughs> Would you quit ragging on Tony so much, Chad? I hope it ain't an American No. That's another hog, eh? Good one, too. Ooh, look at that. To the guy at the bank in Wiener Haven. <laughs> Look how fat that I know. Is. You can catch hogfish in yeah. the Gulf on Hook and Line. This is in the Keys. Chad was standing in the line. The guy was behind him, and Chad was wearing his Hogfish King shirt. The guy says, "What do you say, Chad?" He said, "How many hogfish have you speared?" And I said, "None." And he goes, well, then why are you the hogfish king? And I said, because I catch them. He goes, how do you catch them? I said, on hook and line. He goes, you can't catch them on hook and line. I said, I do every weekend. And he goes, disgusting. are you in the Keys? And I went, no, I'm in the Gulf. There's, there's not hogfish up here. You can't catch them on hook and line. You can't catch them in the Gulf. So I show him a video, and he was trying to say the video was even fake. <laughs> That we were catching them in the keys saying we were in the Gulf. So at that point, I just turned around and left. Yeah. 
you got to give up at that point. I mean, you have video, video proof and f photograph proof of you catching fish, hogfish, in the golf. With, with hey, eggs in hey, my pocket. Hey, look, look, look who's getting close to you. I know, look, if he gets doing? any closer, we're going to have to start making out. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have to do that. <laughs> we don't have to. That's not what you told me before, Tony. No. <laughs> you have a secret man crush. <laughs> I've had dates that weren't I that close. <laughs> <laughs> Time to turn off the cameras, folks. Bless America. I mean, it's Tony Kitchen right next to him. Nada. Got one. Come on, man. I got one in the box. Come on, man. You got one in the box. What you got there, Brian? Yeah, it's not bad. Looks like it's like a five-gallon bucket. <laughs> Stingray. Just dead weight, ain't it? Rockfish. Oh, 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 oh. Uh oh. Hoggy! Oh, 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 Look at she's puking eggs all over. Nice. Oh, look what he did. Hi, we're the Wilsons. Oh, we're oh, the clusters. Oh. <laughs> did you notice what he did? What? He put a huggy on. He got rid of the Oh, knocker he put the huggy on. See, I told you, pattern, folks. Establishing a pattern, they got rid of the knocker rig. Boom. People want to fight us about <laughs> that. Out the knife immediately. He looks it. Looks right. Yep. Good job, buddy. Oh! Whoa! Oh, we missed the sure hands. <laughs> you know, one of them uh, lane snapper goes in the water. I kind of can't be okay with be that. Be okay with that. But when the hog fish hit the water, we will not hear the end of that. Well, there goes your TV time. <laughs> hey. Folks, I told Jen that if she catches a grunt, <laughs> she will not get any more TV time. <laughs> Sorry about your luck, Jen. You had your 15 seconds of fame. Well, Brian's got no fame. <laughs> Zero fame. Some of you guys might recognize this guy from Palmetto Bait and Tackle. Oh, he's become a Rob. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to talk about him in a minute. Let me catch a fish first. <laughs> and uh, him and I have become friends, and and uh, he's been a really good supporter of the channel. Don't know why. Hey, people love the stuff. I love the stuff. That's great. But he business. doesn't use it. Uh oh, Tony's on. Tony's on. Tony's on. Slack lines on. <clears throat> but yeah, if you guys are down in the Palmetto area, Bradenton, even our area. And you're going down there to fish like the big manatee river place like that yeah. stop by and see brian paul metal bait and tackle we just expanded so oh, we, that's right we rented the space next to us so we're going to be getting a, a bunch of new things in we haven't so we might have a little dust here every now and then while we're while we're expanding but we're going to get more bait takes in so we don't run out of bait as uh you know on those real busy weekends when uh, got another hog another hog over here oh jesus so, you so. got the camera over there chad just let us talk <laughs> So yeah, stop. <laughs> stop biting. These them. hogs are telling the ones down there not Don't to bite. It. They're like, oh yeah, That's yeah. That's why I want them on that side there. of the boat. Trash talking from Jen, the grunt killer. The grunt. The grunt killer. All your leftovers come over here and they're like, hey hogs, don't, hey, don't bite. Do it. Don't, don't bite. Do it. Don't bite. There's some fat guy up there <laughs> that's catching us. <laughs> catching us. But anyway. It's a pretty fun ride over, over the side of the boat, though. Yeah. Um, 
stop by and see him if you guys are down in that area. He's right on um, open every day? 41. Yep. Seven days a week, open every day at 6 a.m. Um, close every day at 6 p.m. except for uh, uh, Mondays. But uh, yeah, come check us out. We got a big parking lot, plenty of room for boats. That's kind of the reason we, we lease this space and um, tons of room for boats there, yeah. We're real close to the, uh, to the uh, Palmetto boat ramp on the Manatee River, about four blocks yep, up. About four blocks, yeah. So it's a real simple, you know, come in, get your bait, get your tackle. We sell a lot of tackle. Don't forget about our tackle. We're yep. still, obviously, we sell Tampa Bay Fishing Channel stuff. We have it private labeled through Palmetto Bait and Tackle, but um, Todd still makes all that stuff for us. My arms are getting tired. Hurry up. Okay, sorry. sorry. <laughs> well, I gotta, I'm kidding. I'm I got to give my 15 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Fish. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. And, and this is his lovely before. wife Jen. Hi. Y'all seen her before. The grunt killer. <laughs> <laughs> poor poor grunt killer. Is that another one? Probably. No one here. At least wait till I catch a fish or something. I can't do that because it's like it's a very few and far between. But you have caught your very first what? American Red Snap. And we didn't get on camera and I apologize. Yeah, I did not know. I thought you had a grunt or something. Yeah, but what is what's going on up here? What, what are I mean, are you using heavy leader? I'm using 20 pound test okay. leader, 15 pound test braid. Okay. Tampa Bay Fishing Channel uh, bull jigs. So I don't that know. That might be your problem. Switch the huggy again? Could be a presentation issue. Okay. Yep. Because user error. Use, yeah, user error. Yeah. All right, I'll give it a shot. You can tune back in when I'm catching something. <laughs> but that that is what I talk about all the time is establishing a pattern and what Chad is kind of doing right now is establishing a pattern. Was that a hogfish or was that a scamp? Scamp. So he's using Huggy the gold digger. Which gold he, digger! Which he loves. I ain't looking for some gold digger. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Tony. <laughs> anyway, so we're established. So Chad is establishing a pattern. Yeah. I'm having to go around and talk to everybody. Yeah, there's nobody else gets it. <laughs> so, is it? Hey, could it be that it's the gold digger doing it? You can talk to that camera right there. I got a gold bull jig on. It's not the collar. It's, not it's the, the presentation. It. So that might be your issue, yeah. to be honest with you. Right. So when somebody on the boat really starts getting into fish, then then I, I tell people if you're not using that, then change to it. Like you're these surrounded two. Surrounded by fish. I know. I mean. <laughs> Stay on your side of the boat. I mean, Chad has been throwing the hogfish over, but you know what they're using? They're using a knocker rig, so it's something a little bit different. So they're not catching the fish. Tony and Chad over there are catching fish. I'll, I'll Tony's even give. Just say Tony's catching Wait. fish. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. And, that, and now we need to go talk to Tony. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yes, you heard I, I gave you a compliment. I was catching. Fish. He catches one fish and you give him kudos. He's. You know what? He's about to take over the dirty part of this boat. He's taking over your your spot as the this dirtiest is fisherman on the planet. He's been biting those off and spitting them at me. That's <laughs> why <laughs> well, I had to quit eating the sunflower seeds. So <laughs> which ones do I chew and which ones do I spit? Oh Lord. It's a beautiful day out here. Yep. That's what y'all are doing wrong. Bucket man. Not fighting Making it happen, happen buddy. Yeah. Folks, what's happening is that we've bounced around a ton today and the, the major feeding time just started. We've been double, triple hookups. We've gotten our uh, we've gotten our um, some nice fish eaten by um, sharks. Come on, girl, get it up! You better get it up. Oh, just got eight. Just. 
it is what it is but the bite is on that major feeding time really makes a difference so anyway as i stated on the friday fishing forecast it's very important to pay attention to your salooners because i would say 80 to 90 percent of the time they're dead on chad's already on <laughs> Gotta hope he eats him because I want to see you kick Tony square in the nuts. Nice, nice mangrove. Mango. There you go. Oh, wow. Oh, he's got a mouthful of shrimp. That's where they've been going. Rob came back and stole my spot. Can you believe that? <laughs> Come on, Rob. I go pee for a second and bolt. He beelines it right to the back. That's it. Nice red. Nice red. Yeah. Red, I think. yeah. Nice. Thank you for the spot. In all seriousness, I told him to come back here because I felt bad for him because he wasn't catching fish up there. So I said, Rob, come back here, fish in my spot, and then bam. He catches the keeper red grouper that I should have caught. That's it. You're a giver. I'm a giver, not a taker. Or as Rob says, These two are quitters. The keeper, <laughs> called the keeper red grouper that you couldn't catch. Yeah, right? Not should have. Yeah. Yep. That's good. Nice. good. Yep. All right. Sweet. Thank you. Nice work, man. Do I have to go back to the spot now or I can stay here for a little bit longer? You can stay there. <laughs> well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like how I talked about uh, getting ready for a trip, setting up for a trip and all that, I can do a lot more of those. We can talk about our progressions kind of like we did today. It was a little bit of a tough bite. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna have to look at the barometric pressure and then talk about that later at a later date. Uh, maybe even put a log book in this one. Uh, but I'm, matter of fact, I'm going to so I know because I can tell you right now, as soon as that major feeding time hit, uh, the bite was on fire. It was just literally, it was, it was a good bite. We caught a lot of fish during that time, but the rest of the day was somewhat slow. And uh, but we had a good time. We had a lot of great people on the boat. I want to say thank you to Jen and Brian from Palmetto Bait and Tackle for coming out with us. Thank you for supporting us. We really appreciate it. Thanks to Rob, Eeyore, for coming out with us. Oh, <laughs> oh, we love you, Rob. It's okay, buddy. You did good. You did good. He caught a couple of firsts today. First American Red Snapper. Yep. First, uh, the jack, the Amico jack. Amico, and then... And, uh, that was it, I got the red, I've got red... Did you, caught, did you catch fish. strawberry? Uh, I've caught strawberry before. Yeah. Oh, okay, yep. and you caught hogfish. I've caught, definitely caught hogfish. See, there you go, Chad. And then, of course, Chad, eye candy, yep. in the back. And then Tony, bucket man. It's the bucket man. Anyway, we had a great time. Thanks for watching. Again, if you guys have any suggestions, let us know. Um, I'm going to be doing a safety video here shortly. Again, thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. Fish more, catch more, and we'll see you on the flip side.